Ready? Yo, what's up, everybody? Uh, can we get a big round of applause for Anwar Beck and the whole team that put this together? Because this is just epic. Um, yeah. All right, and I know we're kind of like pressed for time, so I'm just gonna like, I have some slides and I'm just gonna blast through them and then we're gonna get some other special guests up and maybe take some questions, it's gonna be epic. So um, yeah, let's just blast through this. So Tesla hits a trill and I was in Austin like two years ago and probably saw a bunch of you at Fully Charged and we were like, is Tesla gonna make it? Is Tesla gonna hit a trill? Now we fast forward here, like COVID happened. I feel like we didn't all get to celebrate together, so that's why this is super awesome. And Tesla hit a trill. Um, okay, and before I get to the like, what is dope about Tesla, I wanted to do the boring Tesla stock stuff because I know a lot of people follow me for that and want to know what's up. So we hit a trillion. Why am I still holding Tesla stock? Like, why is this such an awesome like equity? 1.2 trillion market cap. I kind of tried to make this like the juice slides too. Um, 2.6 billion operating income. So if you want to hold money in this world today, it's like inflation 7%. Like, is the US dollar worth anything? Like, what is crypto? How about investing in a team of engineers led by Elon Musk and you get upside in all the investments they create? So that is Tesla and you're looking at an asset which basically gives you a 0.8% yield. So it's like a bond with a yield that's growing in perpetuity. And I think we can hit a 3% yield so we'll get a 144 billion run rate on their earnings, which are now 10.4 billion, so 14X. The yield compresses to 3%, and we have a $5 trillion company in 2027. You're making like 20 to 30% a year. Okay, that's the great Tesla stock stuff. Another way to think about it is revenue. This is like the value that you provide to the world, and then you gotta see that value money. Let's not talk about margin, but just, and this is, I feel like, an epic way to show the scale of how Tesla's value to humanity or customers is growing exponentially. Okay, and then this is one more way to say it, operating cash flow, 1.5% yield, so it's like a bond that yields 1.5%, they just reinvest it into new products with that ever-growing yield. So this is why I think Tesla's like, even though it's grown so much, an incredible investment and so unique, but who cares? Tesla hit a trillion, so what? And this is the part I wanna like blast through, but really hit home is like way bigger than the market cap or where Tesla's going in stock price wise. It's how the world kind of shifted courses from that moment. So it's not about, about the market cap at all. And I realized that when I got my Model Y, like I stopped caring or checking the Tesla stock price because when I felt the product and drove it every day, I was like, oh, this is it, like this is why people are stoked, like this is what actually matters, like me putting electric miles in, like driving on FSD. So that's actually the value in Tesla. And so I thought about it more and more and I was like summing this up, like how do we get this to go more and more? It's like the butterfly effect. And I know a lot of you have probably seen this chart from Wait But Why, this awesome blog. And it's kind of like, when I explain why Tesla is so important, it's like it, it was this butterfly effect that forever changed the course of the automotive industry and I think the fossil fuel like emissions of all of humanity with this super little butterfly effect. And so it was the roadster there and I feel like this is kind of exaggerated, it's not perfect, but you get it. We're on this path now because of Tesla to go fully electric in the next 10 or 15 years that would have never happened otherwise. And so I think this is gonna be kind of a new business term, which is like the Tesla effect. So when you think about the Tesla effect, a product, the Roadster, a toy for rich people, a $140,000 car, people would never think that that would change the world, but that led to subsidizing the technology step by step into something that changes the world. So I think this is the Tesla effect. When you unveil a product that seems kind of small and inconsequential, but then will change the entire industry. It's kind of like disruption cubed. So. This is the fleet that electrifies America. Tesla starts selling the Roadster. Now we've actually gotten to this move the needle point. And this is probably a recap for a lot of y'all, but I think this is just the data that backs up like the world is changing. And for us who've been following Tesla, it's like, damn, like, okay, a couple thousand cars here, a couple thousand cars here, but it's like we hit 1% of all cars sold. Like that actually matters. And so we all know how consultants are wrong, right? So I thought this is a funny chart from Deloitte that's like up to date that in 2030 we're gonna sell 25 million electric vehicles. If Tesla compounds at 40%, which I think they will, they're gonna do all of that. And what's amazing about the butterfly effect is that it's not just Tesla. They've literally gone and incepted the entire world. And this is what I think is like the coolest part. Like, and I'm just gonna flat, like, we don't need to get hyped about these, but these are all the inceptions that Tesla created, right? The Mach-E, like Ford, no electric cars back in 2009 when they were selling the Roadster. Now we got this. We got the Ford F-150 Lightning. 
electric Hummer. Like this is straight up like a meme from South Park, if you told me this five years ago, that this is actually <laughs> what they came up with, right? We got the electric Porsche, we got ID4, we got the Rivian's $100 billion IPO. I mean, this is it. Rivian in 2009 was building a gasoline powered sports car. And no shade to Rivian, but they weren't started to change the world. They were started to build a fun car company. But even so, the Tesla effect has allowed them to get unlimited capital to build their electric vision because people are so excited and willing to fund it. So that's how the Tesla effect, the Roadster, created all this. So I'm going to get faster. Okay. That's where we are. This is where we're going. It's epic. One of the other coolest parts about this, Tesla's employed 135,000 people, and these are like amazing jobs. They give everybody stock, which is 17x in the past five years. I think like the way that so many people's lives have changed, if like versus Tesla versus working for any other auto company, like this is a super inspiring part of the story. And it's all about community. And that's why I love like that everyone's here kind of celebrating Tesla. Like if I brought my friends here, the first thing they always say when they come to a Tesla event is like, Everybody's so like happy and positive and it's just like they're actually like rattled that that's a thing <laughs> And so and I just love that there's so few things in the world that bring people together Around a positive idea for the future and that's like what Tesla represents and I think that's incredible Okay, so I'm probably going too slow. Okay, it's structural pack This is how they're pushing the edge on all of this literally a new trajectory for the cost of batteries Which allows like all these electric vehicles and products to come out. Okay This is the other thing that I think is so interesting about Elon Musk. He uses physics to inspire product design. And I don't think, I know we don't think of Tesla products as art, and I think that's kind of a disservice to them. Just because they're a product that they're gonna sell millions of and make a profit on doesn't mean it's not art. And Elon makes this art inspired by physics. I had to put two pictures of this, because this is so dope. Like, I just think the Cybertruck's gonna change everything. Anunnaki minimalism. It's gonna usher in a whole like new era of design for society. And that's such a bigger idea than just like reinventing the pickup truck. So I love that. Tesla semi truck, another big idea of like not the stock price, not market cap, but imagine all of these like railways that Warren Buffett are invested in are replaced by like platoons of Tesla trucks. And I didn't have enough you know, the CGI is not great on this, but like imagine you're driving on the highway and it's just this train of Tesla trucks, they get to their city, they just deploy to their local destinations, like this is gonna be insane and it's not even just like how many cars or how many trucks are they gonna sell, it's like, well there's eight billion people that need to move around and those eight billion people are ordering stuff from all over the world, how do we move that stuff? And I think stuff is just as big as people and so that's why the semi truck doesn't seem like that exciting of a product, but when you think about the market it's addressing, it's so crazy. Um, okay, and then the code rewrite. Tesla's not building, the, they waited to build their biggest gigafactory till they figured out the 4680s. So this is so important, you're like, where's the Cybertruck? Where's the semi-truck? They literally were like, oh, we're about to run the race. Wait, let's rewrite all the code. Kind of like they do for autopilot, but they've done that with batteries. And so they've done like this false head start on building this like massive production capacity until they could have this battery. And so that's what I think is happening. That's the pace of innovation at the battery level. This car, energy is the next butterfly effect. This is what they're doing this. Australia's coal plant, uh, I just love this. This is the type of headline that we need to start seeing, like that we're gonna start seeing every day from Tesla. But the most interesting uh, part about Tesla's energy division, also I feel kind of bad for him, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm more than halfway through, I promise. Um, and so this is a controversial thing, like right? I love crypto like currency and the idea that like a new more equitable financial system could be built with no one controlling it. That's awesome, but it uses a ton of energy. So how do you get around that? It's like, well, I think everything uses energy. Your Tesla uses a ton of energy. Your Tesla bot is gonna use a ton of energy. Like as humanity, we need to realize that we're just gonna grow our energy consumption and a, a ton of new technologies will um, basically create that. And so Kathy Wood has this quote that I put up. I should have given her cred. Energy asset owners of today are the Bitcoin I, I that's probably my typo, miners of tomorrow. And so, but this is a key idea because who is the energy asset owner of today? You with your power wall, or of the future, you with your power wall and solar roof sold to you by a company like Tesla. So I see this insane convergence of Tesla and the world of financial markets that are now being disrupted by energy and Bitcoin. Like, the Bitcoin network uses so much energy. Well, that's actually its competitive advantage to not be able to get hacked. And so changing the world to renewable energy to back this new financial system is gonna have incredible consequences. And Tesla's in the sweet spot to make it all happen renewably. So, okay, homes, 
if you go to their battery day slide, you'll see all these crazy things that batteries are going to disrupt, and a lot of it's home stuff. So I think Elon and Tesla want to build a home, right? And this is what the home looks like today. It's too fragmented. They're not vertically integrated. I think we know what the Tesla home of the future looks like. It's the pod. This is some random pod that already exists. But it's the idea that a Tesla and SpaceX collab will happen to create a pod with solar roof that cleans your air, that's like where humans could live and could, could kind of package this, all these new sustainable technologies into like a truly kind of zero emission off the grid sustainable housing unit. And I think it starts on Mars with Tesla bots or maybe they demo it on Earth, but that's another thing they're gonna come out with. Okay, the robots, FSD beta. This is the biggest part about FSD beta that doesn't get enough love. Like if you were Biden and actually, or like the US government, you're like, okay, what's a huge problem we all have? 46,000 people die of a preventable traffic deaths each year. It causes like 80 billion worth of cost to the health like tax system via hospitals and all that stuff. And we're not, nobody's giving Tesla the credit for actually attempting to fix this problem. And I think it's such a big humanitarian crisis that like, it's like Tesla's the good guy. Nobody's trying to, I don't know. So I just think this, People don't realize how impactful FSD will be when it succeeds. They have the only clear path to do it. And I think Elon, <laughs> I don't know, this is actually gonna be three slides, but this is when it's like, you buy Tesla stock, you're invested in the thing that the smartest, I think the smartest person in the world is invested in with all his net worth too, and that's Elon. And he's an engineer, he's an artist, he's an alien maybe. Like if the aliens were gonna send anybody down to fix Earth, would it not be, oh, we need electric cars, we need solar panels, we also gotta get you guys to Mars because you're probably gonna blow yourself up. Like, of course that's what the aliens would do. So I think that is like, the ability to invest in what this alien is inventing next is an unbelievable, like, unfathomable alpha that Wall Street can't comprehend that I think we all appreciate because we get Elon. And what does that lead to? This. Tesla just expanded their addressable market straight, like, infinitely. And they're going to start on Mars. They're going to do all this. All right, this is my bad joke, but if you think about every industry that the Tesla bot could disrupt, what's, like, the, the biggest one you could think of? Maybe, like, shout it out. Sex? <laughs> no, okay. I tried, but anyway, um, think about it like this. Your Tesla bot could save you 10,000 hours every 10 years. You know what they say about 10,000 hours. That's what it takes to master a skill. So every human that has a Tesla bot can master a new skill every 10 years. This is like a new renaissance of creativity where you don't have to clean, you don't have to cook. It's gonna unlock so much potential for humans that it's, this actually changed the course of like, you know, we're going Westworld, we're going like, like Black Mirror, all these shows are gonna come to reality because of Elon. And I'm just gonna skip to the end of this. These are all some crazy ideas that Tesla's gonna inspire and electrify, which are super epic. But the biggest thing is this. When we all have chips in our brains, I think there's a new, like when you think really about being a long-term Tesla investor, it's like, oh, we're gonna fix the energy and transportation problem. That's changed to fixing the labor and human problem, which is way bigger, and this like nobody wants to work anymore thing, and then that's gonna converge with the chips in our brains. So we have Tesla creating artificial general intelligence in robot form, and then putting that general intelligence in our head via a chip with Neuralink. So this is why I think Tesla and Neuralink have so many synergies, and Elon has decided to take the fate of AI development out of the hands of the public because it's just not working and put it in the hands of Tesla and develop it with the Tesla bot and be the first to commercialize general uh, artificial intelligence. And then, I don't know, this is, like we're literally at the start of the weirdest science fiction movie ever. I don't even think Netflix could write it. So, um, and yeah, and so, and then maybe Elon merges it all into this idea of X. And I think Dave Lee is gonna talk uh, a little bit later, so that's gonna be epic. And he has been a huge pioneer of this idea of X.com. Should we come up with this new holding company? And whether it happens or not, I think X.com represents something so interesting. Is it a company or is it really a country? It's like a new nation you subscribe to where energy is free, rides are free, you're in harmony with the environment, you want to explore the stars. Like when you think about the boring company SpaceX and Neuralink and Tesla, they're converging um, and I know that sounds crazy to create like a new system for humanity, but that is really what's happening in the long run. So I see all these puzzle pieces sort of fitting together on Mars as in the form of X eventually. Um, and this is my last kind of chat, like, you know, Elon loves critical thinking. So if you were gonna like give Elon a piece of critical feedback, right? Like that's tough. I think about Tesla's disrupted so much. What's the one thing they haven't disrupted? The shape of the car. 
So usually when we take our car, it's just us and our car, and we're using all these extra raw materials to propel us there. And our cities are designed around the car. And to see my friends, I have to get in my little box and go drive them to see them. And that's a horrible experience. And I think we're like fragmenting community and humans because of the cars and because of city design. And it's in the hands of companies like Tesla to say, wait, hold up. If we're going to develop all these new cities, all these new sustainable homes, all these new ways of transportation, how can we do it in a way that connects humans and actually brings us together? because in the past, cars and transportation companies have torn us apart with the way they plan cities. So I just think this is something that I really want, um, that I think could be an amazing opportunity to like, you know, change how cities work. But anyway, that's all I got. And now we, um, I think, got some epic special guests coming on.